Hello everyone, welcome back. In this tutorial, we are gonna model this perfectly tileable football. I am really happy with the outcome. I mean, we have no pinching and we have a really flexible object. I mean, with that selection tag, we can play with the polygons and get different shapes like that or even more or less just like that. Before starting, if you are interested in more hard surface stuff, you can check my Umrods and Patreon pages. So without further ado, let's start. Before starting, I want to show you something. So I searched on the internet for the ball and find out that STL. It looks like if you rotate it 90 degrees, they fit perfectly, which means that the pattern is perfect tileable so this is going to be the main subject of the tutorial as you can see use all perfect fit uh, then i needed an image plane but i couldn't find it on the internet so i said that why don't you create it from the stl file i grouped this then created a camera change its projection to front and let's look through that then I changed my resolution to 2K. Then select the null, press S. This is going to perfect the frame it. Then hit render. This is the image that I will use in the tutorial. Now we can start. First, let's switch our layout to model. Go to front view, press Shift and V, go to back and select the image plane let's give some transparency like 75 then i will create a sphere scale it this one is gonna be for projection so i will give 100 segments so it's gonna be a perfect sphere then i will press ctrl and duplicate this one and i'm gonna rename that to ref and hide it this one i'm gonna change its type to hexahedron let's go back to the front view and i'm gonna lower this to something manageable like 18 then make it editable press c i will switch to points mode select rectangle selection and i will try to match these points with the image plane Actually, let's go back to the image plane settings. I'm gonna higher this to let's say 95%. Now I will continue. Just select the points and try to get a similar result with the image plane. Also, you should watch what you select and move like don't select these and move these because i don't want too many points because it's gonna be a pain in the ass to manage these points so it's always good to have a low poly mesh so i'm gonna move that point over here and continue with this Same thing over here, do not select these. I will select this and continue like that. Okay, I think we got the shape. Let's hold down shift and select these polygons. Let's check them in the 3D view. Okay, not bad. Of course, the shape is not ideal, but we are gonna use projection for that. Now I want to invert the selection, U and I, and delete these polygons. Uh, before doing any projection, I want to move these points to get a better 
distribution of the points. Then let's switch to model mode, hold down shift and select shrink wrap. In the target object tab, I will gonna I'm gonna put the ref inside of that. And also I will press Ctrl and duplicate that shrink wrap performer because I'm gonna use it later. Then so if I turn on and off that deformer, you are gonna see that the shape we have just created is not the same anymore, but this is very normal because of the projection. First, I'm gonna right click on the object and say connect objects and delete. This is gonna apply the shrink wrap deformer. Now I will reposition these points. Now we get our pattern. I'm gonna duplicate it a bunch of times. First, let's switch to rotate tool. Then press control. Rotate the object. This is gonna duplicate it. Then hold down shift and rotate it 90 degrees. Two more times. Same again, press control, rotate the object and hold down shift. For the bottom part, same again, but this time I will go minus, no, 180 degrees. This is not looking uh, great right now, but I will use a connect object to connect these points. Uh, this way, I will keep my pattern perfectly because of the connect object. If you want to connect these points by hand, uh, it's not going to be possible to keep the pattern. So first I'm going to select all these objects, press Alt and G, press Alt and select connect object. Boom. For in 0 0.1 centimeters is not enough to connect these points. So I'm going to hire this to like 10. Something has happened, but it's not enough. Let's go higher, 20, no, 30, yeah, maybe, maybe 35. Okay, great. I believe I should stop right here. We have still these unconnected points. If I go over too much, it's going to break the object. So the connect object uh, is not always working great. Uh, also, before making the connect object editable, I want to assign some materials. Click here. Material. Let's make it red. Press Ctrl, duplicate it. Make it yellow. This one blue. This one light blue. Darker. And let's make it something like that. Now I'm going to assign this to this parts okay you can close that and make the connect object editable also the reason that i have created these materials of course it is good to distinguish these separate parts but the main reason that i have assigned these materials is because uh these selections will create these materials will create selections when I make the connect object editable, like if I press C on the connect object, it's going to create a null. I mean, this is the same object, but it has changed its name. And this gave me a bunch of selections. Like if I double click on this one, I'm going to select on this material selection. Same here. So these selections will be really handy. When I want to add insets. So for now, let's use that shrink wrap one more time. Press Ctrl and put the shrink wrap under the null object. Then, actually, let me delete that group and put a new connect object. 
now I'm going to increase my tolerance one more time. Uh, the last time I believe you used 30 or 35. So we should go higher than that to connect these points. Let's try 40. Now 45. Looking nice. Let's check other parts. Okay, everything is looking great. Now I can make the connect object editable. Press C. Can delete that. And let's rename that our object to ball. Uh, the resolution is not um, high enough because you know these points are not much related. I mean, probably if I subdivide that, I will get pinching. So we are gonna need more resolution. So let's switch to polygon mode, select them all, right click and subdivide this. We will need, of course, uh, smoothness. You know, this is very angular right now. To do that, I will use my shrink wrap one more time, press Ctrl and put it under the ball again. Now we have a smooth surface. Let's apply that shrink wrap deformer, right click on the ball and say connect objects and delete. Now we can select our selections. Let's start from this one, double click on that. I want to insert these polygons, right click inset and let's do something like 1.5 not too much now double click on the second polygon selection right click inset let's use the previous settings apply third selection so if you hit spacebar twice it's going to select inset with the previous settings, hit apply for the selection, hit spacebar twice, apply, fifth, apply, and the last one, hit spacebar twice, and apply. Perfect. Now we have something to select, like these edges. So double click on this, hold down shift and select them all. Okay, if you have selected them correctly, your center axis should be right in the center. Now, basically I want to scale this scale to make sure I want to add the subdivision surface press alt subdivision surface turn off shading and this is what we get but we are gonna have a problem right here where three islands meet basically I will need a sporting edge on these edges to make them sharper so let's undo the scale of the edges and I will include these edges to my selection. Hold down shift and select these three edges where these three polygon islands or three patterns meet. All right, I have selected them all. Now I will bevel these edges. Right click, select bevel. Now subdivision is needed. Zero is okay. And bevel them like that. Now to scale this, I want to convert them to polygons, which will be easier because I can use normal move tool. So I press control and click on the polygon island. Uh, sorry, polygon mode. This should convert them to polygons, but we don't want this. I don't want to scale this. So press shift and deselect these three polygons.
All right, I think we are ready to scale these. Before doing that, though, I want to add a subdivision surface over the ball. Select the ball one more time. Right click, select normal move, and move these polygons like that. The select, you see the shape, and this is looking great. If you want more softness, you can push these more. And you should get something softer. You can always change that. So let's make another selection for that selection. Store selection. I'm I'm gonna rename that to seams. So like you can select something else, but you can always go back and select that selection and change the shape of the ball. Like if you want something smoother. You can push this more and you can get something like that or if you want something sharper you can push these like that so you can use the selections efficiently but right now i want to have something like that subdivision surface may not be enough i mean you can see the edges, so let's hire that up. Also, we will have end guns, but it's not gonna be a problem because subdivision surface will convert these two quads. You can see that no pinching at all. Let's check the image plane. All right, not bad. I think this is looking really good. I believe the original one is a little sharper, but uh, I show you the way you can use the selections. Also, the pattern is perfectly preserved because of we have used connect object to connect points. So everything is looking great. We can delete these polygons as uh, materials we don't need is anymore we just needed these selections and we can say goodbye to these references all right guys i believe we are done with the modeling one last thing before finishing the tutorial if you want these edges to be less round or sharper or let's say just like this one you should subdivide your mesh twice. If you remember, when I subdivide my mesh first, I use subdivide tool. But instead of one subdivision used two, this is gonna give you sharper edges. So I will see you in the next tutorials. Take care and bye.